The story begins with a man named Takumi Keano in a dense forest, reflecting on how, until a few hours ago, he was just an ordinary person. Now, he finds himself surrounded by monsters in another world. The monsters, known as Red Wolves, are sea rank beasts. Takumi efficiently kills them all using his skill called Air Shot and stores their remains in his inventory. Takumi then recounts how he ended up in this situation. A few hours earlier, he had encountered someone who apologized to him. Confused, Takumi asked who the person was and where they were. The person introduced himself as Sil, a god, and explained that they were in a part of the Divine Land. Initially skeptical, Takumi wondered if it was some sort of scam, but Sil assured him it was not. Surprised that Sil could read his thoughts, Takumi asked for an explanation. Sil revealed that he had made a mistake and accidentally killed Takumi while trying to repair a tear in the space-time continuum. Sil had put too much power into the repair, inadvertently causing Takumi's death on the other side of the tear. Sil explained that Takumi's life in his original world ended when he was 28 years old. The body he now inhabits is one that Sil created, and this new world is called Adelia, which Sil governs. Takumi's new body is equipped with the basic knowledge of this world, including its language and various skills. Checking his stats, Takumi notices that he is at level 3, likely having leveled up from defeating the Red Wolf. Suddenly, he hears noises from the bushes. Initially wary of another monster, he is surprised to find two small children. They appear lost, and when he tries to ask about their parents, they shy away in fear. Unsure of what to do, Takumi discovers that the children are hungry. He offers them some fruit from his inventory, showing them how to eat it. Once they taste it, they eagerly consume the fruit. Noticing their tattered clothes, Takumi finds children's clothing in his inventory and dresses them in the new attire. He then tells the children he plans to leave the forest and head to the city, inviting them to join him. The children remain silent so Takumi introduces himself and asks for their names, but they do not respond, suspecting they might be mute. He uses his appraisal skill to check their stats. He learns that both children are five years old and nameless. Takumi decides to name the boy Alan and the girl Elena, asking them to come with him. The children follow, showing impressive stamina, though Takumi anticipates needing frequent breaks. Suddenly, the twins run ahead, and Takumi is alarmed to see monsters in their path. Although tempted to use magic, he fears hitting the children and watches in amazement as they defeat the monsters using martial arts skills. When the twins return, he asks if they sense the monsters ahead. They nod, and Takumi instructs them to inform him first if they detect anything from now on. They agree, and the group continues toward the city. As they travel, Takumi reflects that the children's strength makes sense given their survival in the dangerous forest. When they encounter another monster, the children notify Takumi before swiftly defeating it. He praises their efforts and pats their heads. Throughout the journey, the twins handle all the monsters they encounter, allowing Takumi to relax. In the evening, Takumi finds a suitable camping spot. He instructs the children to gather dry branches, which they do, and they make a fire. They cook and eat some meat, and Takumi notices the children starting to smile, indicating they are warming up to him. That night, they sleep inside a magical barrier for protection. The next day, they reach the city. At the gates, they tell the guards they came from the forest of Gaia. The guards are incredulous as the forest of Gaia is known to be extremely dangerous, recommended only for ranky adventurers. Takumi understands their skepticism, especially since he has two children with him. He explains that he left his village to search for herbs and did not venture far into the forest. He also mentions that the children are strong enough to protect themselves. The guards then ask if he obtained the herbs, to which Takumi replies affirmatively. Finally, the guards request to see their identity cards. Takumi acknowledges the kids' help and rewards them for their efforts. He praises them, 
calling them amazing. Suddenly, a rude bald adventurer barges in and yells at the kids, demanding to know what they're doing there. Takumi calmly explains that he brought them, asking if there's a problem. The bald adventurer, Baldy, insists that the place isn't for kids. Takumi points out that there's no age limit and the kids aren't causing any trouble. Baldy retorts that he simply doesn't like seeing them there and starts getting aggressive. In response, the kids quickly overpower him. Takumi intervenes, asking Luna if there will be any punishment for their actions. Luna assures him it was self-defense. At that moment, the guard from earlier arrives, surprised by the commotion. Takumi notices the kids are crying and asks what's wrong. They plead with him not to leave them. Realizing they think this because he yelled at them, Takumi reassures them that he will never leave them. After calming the kids, the guard asks what happened, and Takumi recounts the entire story. The god introduces himself as Grand Vault Loen, or Vault for short, and reveals that he is the second captain of the knights in the city of Shireen. Vault asks if the kids were crying out of fear, and Takumi explains that they thought he would abandon them. Vault wonders why they would think that, and Takumi clarifies that they aren't his children. He just met them in the forest of Gaia, which makes them insecure. Both Luna and Vault are shocked to hear that the kids were in the forest of Gaia. Takumi speculates that they might have been abandoned or got lost there. Luna recalls a recent attack on a slave trader group from the Algo Kingdom by monsters from the forest of Gaia. Vault suggests that the kids might have been left as decoys. Takumi isn't sure, but asks if there would be any issue with him taking care of them. Vault assures him it's fine noting how attached the kids have become to him. Luna, excitedly, asks Takumi if he brought any materials from the forest of Gaia. Takumi confirms he has some red wolf items, which makes Luna ecstatic. He sells the materials to her, receiving a substantial amount of money in return. Vault then explains he is at the guild to discuss an expedition to the Gaia forest, which they periodically undertake to prevent monster overflow. Vault mentions their constant need for more adventurers, particularly a ranked ones, and suggests Takumi should join them. Takumi protests, saying he is only F-ranked, but Vault dismisses this, pointing out that Takumi defeated a red wolf alone. Takumi regrets mentioning the red wolf, and Vault goes to speak with the guild master. Vault requests adventurers for the expedition as usual, and also specifically asks for Takumi Kianu. The guild master is unfamiliar with the name, and Vault explains that Takumi is a newbie. The guild master is surprised that Vault wants to include a rookie, but acknowledges that Takumi, despite being new, isn't a beginner. Days pass, and Takumi becomes accustomed to life in Adeldia. He notes that the twins are also getting more comfortable interacting with strangers. They adopt a routine of taking a day off after two days of quests, continuing their adventures. During a meal, Takumi thinks about the good bread they have, missing the various flavors from his previous world. He decides to make them himself and shares his idea with the twins, who are excited. They visit Golden Bakery, where the shopkeeper, Michelle, asks what he wants. Takumi explains he has a favor to ask and is introduced to Rode, Michelle's father and the store owner. Takumi proposes making a different type of bread, showing jars of jam and custard cream from his inventory. Rode, intrigued, agrees to try. Takumi demonstrates how to knead dough and add fillings. Rode and Michelle, along with Alan and Alina, join in. Takumi also introduces red bean paste as a filling option. They bake the bread, and everyone enjoys it. Rode asks if they can sell the bread in their store, offering Takumi credits and profits. Takumi declines saying he would be happy just to eat the bread anytime. Rode is pleased, and they plan to make more bread the next day. Takumi asks the twins if they like the bread, and they enthusiastically say they want more. The following day, Takumi visits the guild again. Luna informs him that he has advanced to rank E. Takumi checks his level, now at 13, and anticipates more diverse job opportunities. 
Luna asks if he has been to the labyrinth yet. Takumi recalls that there are 108 labyrinths in this world, according to the knowledge Sil gave him. Luna mentions an underground labyrinth near Shirin with 15 floors, a popular spot for acclimated adventurers. Takumi asks the twins if they want to explore the labyrinth, and they are excited. Luna is surprised they plan to go immediately, noting it takes half a day to reach and several days to explore fully. Takumi clarifies that they will only check out the first and second floors for now. The scene shifts to the labyrinth, where they have already reached the third floor. Takumi credits Alan and Alina for guiding him accurately, preventing them from getting lost. He reviews his information, learning that this is an Earth-type labyrinth. They encounter a ground mole, which Takumi deems weak enough for the kids to handle. To his surprise, the kids have already defeated it. The monster disappears, and Takumi explains that defeated monsters in the labyrinth leave dropped items. The kids search for the items, and Takumi finds a mole's whisker, which disappoints him. They continue exploring the labyrinth and eventually stop for a meal. Takumi takes out a magic stove and mentions that with it, they can enjoy warm meals anywhere. He prepares some vegetable soup, and they all savor the food. After eating, they set up a barrier and fall asleep. The next day, the trio continues exploring the labyrinth, defeating all the monsters they encounter along the way. They stop for meals and rest, repeating this cycle for several days until they reach the tenth floor. There, they discover a hidden treasure chest. Takumi warns the twins that treasure chests can contain either amazing or dangerous items. After checking for traps and finding none, he allows the twins to open it. Inside, they find two potions, one for recovering mana and the other for stamina. Takumi notes that these are just low-level items with limited contents. The twins then spot a monster outside the hidden room and promptly defeat it, obtaining its hide as a drop. The twins wonder if the hide is a rare item, but Takumi explains that it's only of moderate value. He reflects on the twins' incredible perception and martial arts skills, marveling at their ability to navigate the labyrinth and find monsters quickly. He feels fortunate that they are not under the control of the authorities, understanding that this is what Sil must have been concerned about. He briefly feels like he is taking advantage of the kids. They encounter a venomous clay snake next, and Takumi tells the twins that he will handle it. Using his rock throw skill combined with wind cutter, he defeats the snake. When giant bees appear, the twins express their desire to fight them, and Takumi lets them. The bees are nimble, dodging the twins' attacks, which leads Takumi to think they might be struggling. However, he soon realizes the twins are just playing with the bees. As they play, Takumi sorts through their collected items and finds some slime jelly. He wonders if he can use it for something. Meanwhile, the twins defeat the bees one by one, collecting honey as a drop item, which they hand to Takumi. He informs them that honey is valuable in Italia and suggests they should find and defeat as many giant bees as possible. The twins agree, and more giant bees appear. They easily defeat them. Afterwards, Takumi cooks something with Alan and Elena's help. He adds honey on top, creating French toast. They all find it delicious. More giant bees show up, and Takumi uses air shot to defeat them, though they keep coming. He realizes the bees are attracted to the smell of honey, meaning they'll have plenty of honey as they continue. After gathering a substantial amount of honey, they resume exploring and eventually reach the lowest floor. At the final boss room, they find a large door and enter. The door closes behind them, and a giant earthworm appears. Takumi realizes they must defeat it to escape. He tells the twins to leave it to him and uses wind blades, but the earthworm dodges. It attacks with sand balls, which Takumi destroys with air shot before firing a wind arrow to defeat it. Surprised by how easily he won, Takumi speculates that this must be a lower-ranked labyrinth. He considers that his abilities might be overpowered. The defeated earthworm drops a fawn, a fairy stone, and some worm meat. 
Takumi is disgusted to learn that worm meat is a premium ingredient. He checks on the twins, who are fine, and commend him by patting his head. A secret door opens in the boss room, revealing a teleportation device that can take them directly to the first floor. They also find a treasure chest containing fire bombs, which Takumi likens to hand grenades. He stops the twins from playing with them. They use the teleportation device to exit the labyrinth, and Takumi suggests heading back to the city. On the way, the twins spot a dog, which Takumi quickly realizes is a wolf. He remains cautious, but notices the wolf acting like a pet. Since Alan and Elena don't find it suspicious, he decides it must not be dangerous. Using appraisal, he discovers it's a Fenrir, an S-ranked monster meant to be his summon beast. Takumi doesn't recall making a contract with any monster, suspecting it's Sill's doing. He asks the beast if it's a summon, confirming that it is and noticing it follows his every command. The twins hug the beast, finding it cute and fluffy. They ask Takumi to name it, and he chooses Jewel. As they approach the city, Takumi explains that they can't bring Jewel into the city, as people would panic at the sight of a monster. He tells Jewel to hide in his shadow for now. He explains that summoning is considered dark magic, and summon beasts are usually hidden in shadows, so they can be called upon when needed. The scene shifts to Takumi at the church, where he talks to Sil. Sil mentions feeling lonely because Takumi hadn't visited for a while. Takumi explains that he's there to ask about the summon. Sil is confused at first, then realizes it must have been the god of water who sent the Fenrir. Sil laments that it isn't fair, as he was supposed to send Takumi a familiar first. He promises to send one soon, and Takumi will find it in the meadow outside the city the next day. Takumi wonders why the god of water sent him a familiar, and Sil explains that they probably wanted to thank him likely related to Alina and Alan, who have water magic. Sil hands Takumi additional items from the God of Water, surprising him with their number. Sil mentions that more items will be sent soon. Takumi protests, but Sil warns that refusing might result in a curse, leaving Takumi no choice but to accept. The scene cuts to Takumi sleeping at the inn. The next day, they head to the meadow and find a tiger, and some kind of bird there. Thanks for watching episodes 1 and 2. If you enjoyed it, then don't forget to like, share and subscribe our channel for more of this anime.